Of all the film genres we've covered here on Staunch TV, I somehow forgot to touch on one of my favorites. Now, these particular movies linger in my mind from being a child of the mom and pop video shops of times past, all pushing product directly to my age group, and more so, um, you know, to those a bit older than me. Which is why these lower quality hood comedies made their way into my psyche from older siblings or, you know, friends renting them and me watching them when I wasn't supposed to. You know the movies I'm talking about. Urban or black comedies done on a budget. A lot of classics here, if, I, if I'm being honest. <laughs> but one really bad hood movie I discovered all on my own uh, and spent a long weekend with as a kid was none other than the hood classic The Breaks, starring comedy legend, in my eyes at least, Mitch Mullaney. Well, let's get to it. Derek King there. is a white man I gotta go. who thinks he's black. The film tells the tale of Derek, an Irish man-child who grew up in the hood, raised by a black family, of course, who has become a real burden to his family, and he's shunned from the house, but he can return upon one condition laid out by his mama, that he brings a gallon of milk home before the end of the workday. So naturally, hilarity ensues. I've been sludging through a lot of these flicks lately, and I gotta say, The Breaks is definitely my favorite of the bunch. I mean, come on, there's really no memorable scenes in, let's say, movies like Fat Beach or, or like Sprung, you know? I mean, I guess there is, but here with The Breaks, for better or worse, nearly every scene is memorable. <laughs> uh, yeah. Dog. Yeah, Ow, dog. Out, huh? okay. You hurting me, dog? Well, okay. Chris, come on, Chris. Get your ass on out here, motherfucker. Yo, Chris, let's go, dog. Yeah, Chris, come on, get Yo, your little Chris, ass with you. Know, sorry, we know your ass is in there. Let's go. And uh, with zero subtlety, I may add, I mean, we touch on damn near every racial stereotype here. And the film wastes no time showing its status. Trust me. I tried keeping count of all the racial humor, but I lost count pretty damn quick. <laughs> What the fuck you think? No, my father, my neck hurt. And within the bring home some milk plotline, we get a subpar love story angle between Derek and Anne, played by Paula Jai Parker, and the relationship is just so non-believable. Trust me, but whatever. You know that happens in these movies. Car was hit by black guy, nappy hair. Passenger, white guy, I think. Oh, my neck hurts. The other little running plot line that happens is that Derek keeps running into this little kid who they refer to as Little Gay Urkel, who is a runaway and who has uh, flyers literally posted everywhere, like park benches, there's like ads everywhere, there's flyers all over the place, and Derek just somehow doesn't notice the entire time. And it proves to be a pretty funny recurring gag. It's hard sometimes, you know? I mean, the, the answer's... They ain't always going to be right in front of you, G. Sometimes you got to you got to look around a little bit. But if I'm being truthful, the movie is bad, really bad actually. When the jokes don't hit, they do not hit, and it can get a little cringy at times. And they for some reason parodied a few movies, um one of them being an outdated pulp fiction joke, seemingly put it in the movie, I guess, to just offend as many people as possible. Proving to be more horrifying than the scene it was parodying, <laughs> ironically. The Statue of Love. Give it to him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And the film can be kind of a chore to get through at times as well. And looking back, well, it seems this one was done at a strange point in Mulaney's career. Mitch Mulaney cut his teeth in comedy clubs in the Bay Area and such, and soared heavy in his early years eventually landing spots on MTV's Half Hour Comedy Hour and uh, show, Showtime at the Apollo and an evening at the Improv. All the ladies make some noise. Ladies, make some noise tonight. All right, how about the bitches? Any bitches here? You know who you are. Make some noise. Hey, okay, a couple of bitches. Hey, bitch. And his early success, plus his urban style of humor, caught the eye of a flourishing and growing network at the time, the WB and Mitch would eventually land a spot on Hangin' with Mr. Cooper, and also a recurring role on The Wayans Brothers, a fan favorite from what I remember. What up, what up, G-Money? 
My bad. And after his time on the Wayans Brothers, he landed a starring role in the WB original, Nick Frino, Licensed Teacher. And even popped up in one of those classic ads. You, you guys remember these things? Michigan J, take it away, Michigan J. Dubba, 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 WB. through that. Oh shit, I forgot all about Savannah. Stay tuned, folks. Nick Frino would last two seasons, uh, starting out strong, but ending uneventfully. And while it's fondly remembered by Mulaney fans, it, it's basically lost in time. All the while, though, uh, Mulaney was doing stand-up and working on the script for his feature debut in 1999, which eventually became The Breaks. And it wouldn't be until 2002 when he landed another film role, though. Um, this time being in The Sweetest Thing. And in 2003, he would get another leading role, um, you know, kinda, when he hosted the ABC reality series American Girl. Another one lost in time. Mulaney would go on to write a book about his career called Stranded at Almost. I'm trying to find it myself right now. And uh, he was one of the first comedians to start his own YouTube channel also. But shortly after, Mulaney would pass due to diabetic-related illness in 2008. And although he gets very little love from mainstream comics these days, he is fondly remembered by his fans and was indeed a pioneer in comedy. A tribute was held in his honor after his death at the Laugh Factory and was attended by many of his peers. I mean, think about it. Mitch Mullaney really was ahead of his time. He was making these white boy rapper type flicks way before any other, you know, much more successful attempts. And, you know, he took advantage of social media and such, just as Dane Cook was starting to do the same thing. Which, you know, would eventually result in Dane becoming a household name. Literally, at the same time, Mitch Mullaney was doing that heavily as well. But, you know, Mullaney just didn't have the time, so to speak, to gain a following like that. Luckily, though, with his sole feature, The Breaks, there is just enough there for it to be a hood classic. A legitimate hood classic. I mean... The cast alone. Anthony Anderson, um, a special appearance by George Clinton, great. Loretta Devine, E-40, Pierre Edwards, Kevin P. Farley, Darius McCrary, who has this funny line. He called me Little Gay Urkel. Hey, he Was do look like a little gay Urkel, though. Gary Payton, Clifton Powell, Paula Jai Parker, some guy named Speedy, Exhibit, and Lloyd Avery II. Another thing I pondered on is, you know, I, I wonder what Mulaney's relationship was with the Wayans brothers. As at the same time this film was being made, um, the Wayans were doing their own hood comedies and such. They had already done their big hood classic. And you can really kind of see the big picture of how these styles and quality of these movies were done back in the day. It's, it's actually pretty fascinating. Friday had Chris Tucker. The Breaks had Lamont Bentley. Friday had Cedric the Entertainer. The Breaks had Pierre. <laughs> Shout out to Pierre. Now comparing this to Friday uh, obviously isn't too fair. Um, if anything, it should be compared to like, I got the hookup or something, I don't know. As again, the quality just isn't there. But damn, the attempt was ballsy. And it works as a silly, very silly little hood comedy. Just don't be offended so easily. Whose idea was it? to set up snacks and have a snack table. Oh, that was yours. Well, I came up with that idea. Whose idea was it to, 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 to have the Kill Whitey Bingo night? I thought about breaking this movie down and cracking jokes as another bad movie breakdown. But upon rewatching, I, I, you know, I really felt the film and Mitch Mullaney deserved more respect than that. I for one think that Mitch Mullaney should be honored yearly on St. Patrick's Day, <laughs> even if it's just as a goof, you know? And I wish that his specials and that, you know, his book, that they would catch on somehow. We miss you, Mitch. Be sure to subscribe and hit that little notification bell. And let me know what other obscure hood classics you'd like for me to talk about. Oh, and uh, consider joining our Patreon. We are all having just the, just the best time over there.